good morning uh, to everybody and at the outset i'd like to thank the organizing group of uh, iocon and uh, the ssi for giving me uh, an opportunity to present uh, a video lecture on uh, uh, percolator screws particle screws uh, and the thoracolumbar fractures biomechanically one must understand the spine is uh, like a beam it is a vertical structure and the axial loading creates uniform compressive stress across the beam. Bending creates areas of compression and tensile stresses and if both these modes are present, they become very additive and the force mechanics become more. Now normally the anterior spine is subjected to great compressive stresses under normal everyday axial and bending loads. And that's one of the main reasons why we find that we have a very high incidence of thoracolumbar fractures with high velocity injuries as well as with fall from heights, etc. Now, when going on into minimally invasive spine surgery of a percutaneous particle screw fixations, the terminology used is actually better if it is minimally axis spine surgery. The surgical technique is very similar, only the surgical approach of the working channel is a little different. And however, it's heavily instrument dependent overall. Now, the main goal of MISS is to do an efficient target surgery with a minimum amount of iatrogenic trauma, which is a surgical insult. Access surgery or target surgery can be minimally invasive, but surgery itself is never compromised. <clears throat> now, the principles involved include the skin incision, the target, the collateral damage, etc. So the skin incision should be an adequately placed incision, which should be adequate and it should also be cosmetic. And the route to target should be the least traumatic or the anatomical pathway is favored. It should be fast and quick to approach. And there should be negligible or repairable collateral damage as seen in these outcomes. Now, most importantly in this, the target exposure should be adequate like in any open surgery and the target treatment should be efficient without restrictions due to the approach. And post-operatively, we should not find any, uh, we should find only negligible traces of where we have been and the outcome measure should not be hindered or, uh, or changed because of what? Minimal access surgery. Now the indications for percutaneous vertebral uh, particle screws would be a burst fracture with normal neurology, a type A or type B fracture, incomplete neurology, or in combination with other procedures like anterior surgeries, etc. Now, when going on to the surgical technique, before going to the videos, I just want to tell you about certain things like patient positioning, image verification, instrumentation sequence, a transparticular approach, and then go on to the video demonstrating the percutaneous particle screw technique. So most importantly, the patient is placed in a ready loosened table where you have to be able to do both AP and lateral views. It's very, very important that you be able to see both AP and lateral views, and this should never be compromised. So place padded rolls under the chest, hips, and lower legs to protect the areas. Pad the face, elbows, and potential pressure points like you do in any open surgery. Once the patient is in, the C arm is rolled in, and identify the disease level, then correct relationships and positioning is arranged. And this is important for us to minimize errors of level verification, etc. So, firstly, an AP image is obtained, and it is important that you identify one level at a time. Identify the parallel, superior, and or inferior vertebral body end plates. Make sure the pedicles are well visualized in the upper half of the entire vertebral body and orient your spinous process to be equidistant but in the vertebral body pedicles as I show in the next few slides. So the picture here we can see on the C-arm where the pedicle is well oriented in the upper half of the, of the image of the uh, body and the, you can see the end plates are single, seen as single line and parallel as compared to this picture which shows the pedicles to be oriented differently and, and you see a biconcave picture on the end plates indicating that the positioning is not adequate as far as the image is concerned. Very important here again, the spinous process is seen in the middle and the equidistant but in the pedicles. This will give us a true AP picture. The spinous process shifted towards one side 
indicates that the imaging is not a true ap and therefore you have to rotate the picture rotate the cm to make sure you get a appropriate position and appropriate image once the ap view is imaged then you go on to the cp say a lateral view again to identify it and the same principles have to be followed in the lateral imaging also as you can see here a single image uh, end plate is very important and you should avoid seeing a biconcave picture which means that means this picture is oblique now there's also another thing called as a coaxial or the end phase image which is where you rotate the c arm 10 to 20 degrees to see the end on appearance of the pedicle which is the largest appearance or the largest view seen and this view also is useful to confirm our position and presence where we are doing before we go on to the scan session the pedicle location is marked a midline incision midline picture is drawn the pedicles are located and typically 1.5 cm is lateral to the lateral margin of the pedicle the skin nick is made for our jam sheet needle insertion this is the most important thing which you use and once the jam sheet needle is entered it is usually entered at the 10 or 11 o'clock position or the 2 o'clock position on the lateral pedicle margin this is the safest position to be in and from this position we carry on with our next procedures so once we have this the whole procedure is done on the ap view and then you shift your cm to the lateral view so verify your trajectory into the vertebral body to ensure proper fracture reduction and also make sure that your entry is correctly into the middle of the pedicle and not skewed either ways so the most important thing to see again once you're gone on to the ap and lateral on the lateral border you have to make sure that your pedicle your needle is at the posterior vertebral body and this will correspond on the ap view with the gauge needle being contained within the pedicle canal if this is not appropriate then you have, that means that your their needle is in the wrong position and therefore you have to take it and redo both the ap and the lateral views as before this is a video starting with, which shows you the where is insert a technique and insertion point and i'll play the video now for your benefit this is an image of a, a type a fracture spine and image is being done i typically mark the position of the pedicle and once the image position is confirmed my starting point is 1.5 cm lateral to the lateral margin of the pedicle and then a small skin incision is made the skin incision should be large enough for you to insert a pedicle screw with an extender a lot of times the skin incision is made very very small and then you have a difficulty in pushing your extender and the screws through that and the screw the extender gets disengaged so do not be shy of making a little larger incision so that your whole extender can go in along with that now i feel for the transverse process and i also clear the fascia with my artery forces so once i feel the transverse process i then get the jamshetty needle this position is checked on the cm does to be w sure one can go ahead with using the jam shetty needle and double checking the position of the c arm so 11 gauge jam shetty needle is then taken across and you place it across on to the transverse process i start off by doing the transverse process so that i can minimize the amount of x ray pictures and then i walk the, the needle to the junction but in the transverse process and the facet joint and then feel the rump the little bit of ridge or a bump over there using that as a guide i then go ahead and 
without force just make an entry into the junction there and then look at the image to see whether i am on the lateral border of the pedicle the other step which i also do to feel is when i know to avoid over exposure is to just make sure like we do a pedicle feeler i put a marker across to feel if i'm in the bony parts of felt and this gives me a clue as to whether i'm out soft tissue or somewhere now having done that i repeat the thing on the other on the next level also the second needle is inserted and again positions are all done under image intensified control so once this is done on the ap view then we shift on to the lateral view to make sure that i am there in the middle of the pedicle and into the vertebral body it's very important to remember that the whole imaging is done through your ap view and then move on to the lateral view at the end of it to assess this once this is done the stylet is removed and a guide wire is then passed the guide wire helps you to feel the body as well as to make sure you are well within the pedicle and then once the guide wire is in the sheath is removed and the guide wire is left in in place now we go on to the surgical steps and then go on to the a video again after this so once the guide, guide wire is left in the sequential dilation is done the dil largest dilator being left in place over the guide pin once the largest dilator is left the pedicle is then tapped with an appropriate size for the appropriate size screw and an appropriate size screw with an extender is then entered into the pedicle the procedure is then repeated for the other levels also so here we see the video demonstrating position and technique as such so the dilators are being entered there are the sequential dilation this is basically to make sure there is no muscle being caught and uh, this helps in doing a, a smooth procedure so once the dilators are in it's very important uh, to see that you have to hold the guide wire stabilize it when removing the jam sheddy or the 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 smaller dilators otherwise the guide wire can back out and you have to go back and repeat the procedure all over again so to prevent that from happening somebody has to make sure you hold on to the guide wire and prevent it from backing out similarly in elderly individuals with osteoporotic it's best not to push the guide wire too hard as it will guide migrate and migration of guide wire and breakage causes our very big problems so you could see somebody is holding on to it as we are going on and then we exchange hands to make sure the guide wire is always held and kept in position you can use an artery forceps or a cocker clamp to hold the guide wire and make sure the transition process is quite smooth so once the guide wire is once the dilators are sequentially done the largest dilator is left then an appropriate size tap if i'm going to put a 6.5 mm screw i use a 5.5 mm tap and not a 6.5 tap i i find that i get a better fit by using one size smaller tap as compared to the size of the screw which i am going to be inserting so once the tap is done again make sure you then make sure by imaging that the guide wire is not migrating as you can see over here my assistant holds the guide wire to prevent it from migration as migration is one of the more serious problems secondly also make sure that the guide wire given to you is a straight and not bent wire bent wires are always problematic 
because as you back your uh, tap out you will find the guide wire also coming out with you along with your tap and that means again you have to go back and redo the procedure all again so which is which is again a pain so ensure that the guide wire is held in place is not going to be back up further and is not going to pull out across along with your hand once the tapping is done you can then go ahead and insert your appropriate screw so as you go on to this you will find that the screws are coming in along with your extenders at this point of time once the tapping has been done you remove the the largest dilator kept and then go ahead and insert your screw into the pedicle again make sure somebody is holding on to the guide wire to make sure that that doesn't migrate along with your screw one good tip to be done before putting your screw in is take another guide wire make sure that the guide wire passes easily in your pedicle screw before planning on the insertion so that you don't get into a hassle when inserting the screw finding that the guide wire is stuck inside and not coming out and having the issue of taking it out so all the time now when you will look at it you can use your imaging to double check your position and make sure that your screws in good position all the way and there's no backing of the wires across so the procedure is then repeated on the other side on the next level also as you can see the extender on this is lagged onto the screw and you must make sure that you don't uh, pull the extender out by by fiddling around with it too much once both the once both the screws are in then appropriate jigs are used too small an incision at this point of time will make sure the extender backs off that is one of the problems we have so you also make sure that the skin incision is adequate enough for these extenders to go smoothly in you will find that in this case that our incision has been smaller and we are struggling to get the extender in fully and therefore we have to dilate the incision a little bit to go ahead and get the ins the ins extender going smoothly inside otherwise the fear of the extender backing out is very much there and it is very important to remember that this whole procedure comes again to be repeated if the extender backs off so once this is done the next step would be to plan your incision for getting your or now there are various new devices available where you can do it through the same incision or through a different incision depending on which company you use in this case here we are now you know using a a device which uh, which which is necessitates the use of a a separate incision keflet word for us to pass the rod in so this will give us a a picture of where to get this this jig here allows us to plan the incision for getting the rod in so once the entry point is marked the small nick is made again and using this we could go ahead and pass the rod which is appropriately contoured into your pedicle screws as you could see this rod comes with the holder and the rod is being in inserted we could do it without the use of the cm by just feeling for the position and thing and then appropriately checking on the image the position to make confirm that our 
rod is in position there. So once it's in to one screw, then you, you, you move your extender a little bit to see whether it's rotating freely or the rod is in. If you know the rod is in, the extender will not rotate freely. So that means you know and you confirm your position with the image intensifier. Once the rod is in fully, then you go ahead and using a rod reducer, you then gradually reduce the rod onto position and lock it with your final tightening screws. This shows you the rod reduction device as you can see, which is very important. There are a couple of rod reduction devices available with various companies. I prefer to use a reduction device which pushes the rod down onto the screw head as compared to a device which pulls the screw up onto the rod. So the advantage of this is there's less force involved in it and screw pullouts and backouts are, are uncommon with this type of a device as compared to a a device which uses the uh, screw to pull back onto your rod. So once this is done, sequentially it is being done to make sure that the screw, the rods are well landed and then these are captured on by our set screws. Again, it is checked to make sure physically that there's no rotation and the position is ascertained. It's also double confirmed by the image and the set screw is loaded. Before final tightening of the set screws, appropriate distraction or compression, depending on what mode you want to achieve it in, is, going, is also done by tightening the screws at one end. Here again, it's important to make sure that it's tightened and the torque holder is also placed across so that you do not cut out or pull out any of these things. As you'll see now, you'll have a final torque driver which is useful to a distraction device or a compression device is used as is necessary to bring about appropriate distraction or compression based on what you would like to achieve on the case. It's important to place the anti-torque uh, holder before doing the final tightening so that you don't toggle the pedicle screws or cut it out in the final stage. Once this is done, the extenders are then disengaged. So going on to it, little bit of work from our side review and what are the advantages we see in our own thing. From our studies, we have found that the kyphotic angles are definitely better, better the correction of deformities achieved. Blood loss is very minimal as you can see from this and the pain scores are significantly less postoperatively as compared to the open surgery. And of course, the mobilization time also has been significantly less. We're able to discharge the patient the second day nowadays. 
as compared to our open open groups and this find that you have much better uh, uh, advantages there so the most important thing is a very minimal soft tissue disruption is noticed reduced blood loss is seen reduced infection rate is there reduced operating time as you keep doing it you find you can reduce the operating time the initial phases take a little time but then progressively as you keep doing it becomes better and it's very very advantages in a very polytraumatized patient complications can occur as i told you before the, it's a steep learning curve very demanding high amount of exposure to radiation and it's very heavily implant and implant related and you can see that you have a pull out or you can have cut outs with these kind of procedures to conclude is a minimum difference in duration of surgery and post op gain in kyphotic angle within various facings but then is advantages using the minimally invasive technique as it is elegant and and it produces less pain thank you again for the patient hearing and hope more people go on to minimally invasive techniques thank you very much